Good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is a wonderful afternoon. And then let me welcome all of you to this webinar as part of the series, Manage Your Career in the Midst of Uncertainty. And the topic for today's webinar is the future of jobs in the midst of COVID-19. I am your presenter today. And a quick introduction about myself. My name is Surya Prakash Mohapatra. And I'm currently heading talent transformation and learning and development for Vipro digital operations and platforms. So we would have a discussion on this very important topic. And as we move on, and then I quickly share with you the agenda for our webinar today. We are going to talk about um, three things in the discussion today. We will talk about what is this COVID-19 crisis and how is this impacting all of us today? How can we deal with this crisis? And what's the way forward? What are the opportunities? What are the possibilities for career, employment, jobs, and so on? So that's exactly is the topic of our webinar today. And I'm really happy and excited to know that many of you have really shown interest to part of to become part of this seminar or the webinar to understand more about this challenge, this crisis, and also to understand how to deal with this. So what we're dealing with today is a battle between life and livelihood. This is a battle between survival and earning a livelihood or living. This is an interesting battle, very intricate battle, very complex battle. It's not as simple as it sounds because both are dependent on each other, life and livelihood. Livelihood has no meaning if there is no life. And if there is no livelihood, this is going to impact life as well. But when a battle surfaces between life and livelihood in the short run, it's the life that wins the battle because governments, societies, nations try their best to protect life to begin with. So as we move on, We will look at this, these three things exactly, understand this crisis a little bit more, understand its impact, understand how do we deal with this crisis and look at the way forward opportunities in career and employment. So let's look at the crisis and its impact. COVID-19, it's the crisis and its impact. So my dear students, the youngsters, the future of this nation. As we look at the next slide, you can, you can clearly see as we move on, there are four different areas the impact of COVID-19 is felt. And as you can see in the subsequent slide, these four blocks, life and lifestyle, economy and politics, work and profession, environment and ecology. So these are the four areas you will see COVID-19 spreading its impact, its ramifications. And each one of these four areas are deeply impacted by COVID-19. And interestingly, 
this is not a linear impact because these four aspects are so intertwined with each other. If there is an impact on life, that can impact profession as well. If there is an impact on economy, that can also impact life or that can impact environment. If environment has been impacted, it's also going to impact our lifestyle. So it's not just that COVID-19 is impacting each one of them. They're so inextricably interwined with each other that the, the impact is multifaceted. It's very difficult to segregate the impact um, on one without taking into consideration the other three as well. So let's look at the impact on each one of them. And we can start with the next trial, next slide, looking at the impact on our life and lifestyle. So COVID-19 has already changed our lifestyle. It has uh, made a dent into our life. It has made some impact on our life and lifestyle, both positively and with some, some discomfort as well. So as you can see here, our life and lifestyle is going to change significantly. Hygiene practices are going to become the order of the day. It's, it's going to become an intricate part of our daily life, whether it is sanitization, hand washing, after stepping out and coming back home, all these things are going to become commonplace. People are going to become more and more health conscious. People are going to reduce the spend on nice to have things. They're going to spend more on essential things. Online, um, web technology, internet, e-commerce, all of that are going to change the way we shop, we buy, we meet the doctor, we talk to our friends, we play. All that is going to change with the advent of web technology and everything going online. You know, I just got to hear that, I got to hear this prediction that the hospitals, the OPDs will now be online. Patients will not have to walk into a hospital. If they have to consult a doctor, they can sit inside the comforts of their home and then talk to a doctor online. Of course, if it's something very critical, they may have to come to the hospital. E-entertainment, home entertainment is gonna you know, change the way we used to entertain ourselves in the past. I just got to know that YouTube is planning a film festival, an entire film festival virtually on their platform. So that's, that talks about the change that we are going to see, the impact that we're going to see on life and lifestyle because of COVID-19. Let's, let's now move on and look at what's the impact on our profession, on the work, at the workplace. That is going to be huge ramification, huge implications on our profession. In International Labor Organization has already predicted that about 195 million full-time workers across the globe would lose their jobs. That's absolutely scary, is a matter of concern. Work from home will become the new norm. Most organizations will allow their people to work from home. And technology will enable that Technology will make working from home more and more and more seamless. Salary components at the workplace will become more flexible. Employers would prefer that. They would like to pay for work. They would like to have a flexible salary structure where, where they're where at difficult times, at the time of recession, et cetera, where they're not employing people, they don't have to pay people, pay salaries to people. Gig workers will be seen more and more. Gig workers are the workers who are not full-time employees. They're part-time employees. Some of them are on contract. Some of them work for multiple employers at the same time. And the ones that who run startups, et cetera, all of them constitute the gig economy. Fitment will overrule qualification. This is an important one, uh, my dear. Students, uh, in future, fitment is going to be valued more than qualification. You may, may have a better qualification, but do you fit into the role? 
then maybe somebody who ha- who is less qualified might fit into the role better organizations might prefer them value proposition will increase so value that we create for our employers for our organizations will have the precedence will have greater weightage over the experience that we have the qualification that we have titles and designations may not matter much what will matter is the value that we bring to the workplace reskilling lifelong learning online learning adoption all that will increase at the workplace and more and more professionals will try and upskill and reskill themselves all the time now let's move on and let's look at the impact on the environment there has been tremendous impact on the environment because of covid-19 already pollution levels have dropped countries like china and italy have recorded significant reductions in their nitrogen dioxide levels water bodies have also been clearing up the rivers of rivers like yamuna and ganga have seen significant improvement and some of my friends who stay in siliguri in west bengal just i was talking to them a couple of days ago they were saying they can see the gigantic himalayas clearly so the skies are clearing up the water bodies are clearing up the air is getting purified this is having a fantastic fabulous impact on the environment now let's move on now let's look at the important one which probably concerns many of us as we move on to the next slide um you can now understand um the impact on economy while we talked about the impact on environment we talked about impact on our life and lifestyle we talked about the impact on on our profession and the work and workplace but the economy is going to have severe impact and all of us are going to see a massive deep recession and economists have predicted that this is going to be a deep recession which might continue for several months as some of you might be students of i think most of you are students of management and you would understand this better um a recession is a vicious cycle it's a vicious cycle and when covid-19 um hit us badly it actually impacted two different aspects of economy one is the demand side other one is the supply side when because of the covid-19 everybody got locked down factories got closed down um manufacturing um establishments got shut down that created a severe supply crisis and as that continued as people stayed inside the home and um they did not want to buy anything other than the essential products essential products meaning their vegetables medicines groceries etc that was a severe crunch of demand so that was a supply crisis and there was a demand crisis and that's what the vicious cycle is all about so when demand drops when people do not want to buy goods and products obviously factories um business establishments they reduced production because there is no demand for their products if they reduce production their revenue drops down their income goes down so if their revenue drops they cannot afford to have their employees they start laying off people when they lay off people that further reduces purchasing power of people because people are jobless there now and they do not have an income so they cannot buy so that leads to even further reduction in spending and that essentially means low demand and low demand means low production the vicious cycle continues what happens people who jo- who have jobs they also stop buying because they now have the fear of losing their jobs as well bank stop lending organization stop running their businesses and that leads to a vicious cycle and the economy goes into a deep recession 
that can be a very, very scary thing for any economy, for any nation, for the globe as well. As we move on, let's talk about now, how do we get out of, the, of this vicious cycle? We understand that the economy is heading towards a recession, but what's the way out? How do we get out of it? What's the solution? If you look at the next slide, as we move on, my dear friends, the solution is to boost activities in the economy. The solution is to restart activities. The solution is to increase demand. And the solution is to increase consumption. consumption. So as people start consuming more, essentially leading to higher demand, essentially leading to higher production, increase in production, that essentially means activities start all over again in the economy, in the country. And that essentially means more cash coming into the economy, more cash flowing into businesses, people having purchasing power to buy things and so on. That's the need of the hour. But the challenge today is how do you do that? When Activities in the economy, activities in the country could lead to a massive and quick spread of the disease, of, of the infection, of the virus. So that's where the challenge, that's where the battle between life and livelihood gets triggered, leading to a massive deep recession. The way out and what different stakeholders in the country, what different agencies, and what different key organizations, partners in, in, the, in, the, in the country can do is something that we will look at now. Let's look at the next slide, where we are talking about what different stakeholders can do differently. Governments, financial institutions and banks, organizations, universities like yours, and individuals like you and me, all of us, and all of us can play an important role. Governments have got a very important, significant responsibility of taking care of the poor. People who are job who are going to be jobless are mostly the ones who are ways earners, mostly the ones who work every day to earn their daily living. And many of them possibly could be below the poverty line or just on the borderline. And governments need to take care of them. If these people do not have cash on the hand, they cannot buy vegetables, they cannot buy rice and dal, they cannot buy groceries. So government will have to make sure that they have the money to buy the bare minimum essentials. If not cash, at least the bare minimum essential products need to be delivered to them so that they can survive. That's absolutely important. Government, Governments across the globe need to bring up special packages to, in, to industries to survive. Some of the industries will very, very severely be impacted. We, we'll talk about in the next uh, few minutes. And such industries, for example, airline industry, need to be given that boost to survive. They need those special packages. Governments also need to introduce programs to boost investment and economic activities. What can financial institutions and banks do? They have a great responsibilities. They cannot shy away from this crisis. They cannot stop giving loans. They have to support the economy. They have to introduce emergency lending to medium and small scale uh, enterprises. They have to um, probably possibly lower down the interest rates in the interim to support uh, small businesses which would struggle through this crisis. They should allow deferment of repayment. They should accelerate digitization because contact transaction is still filled with fear of infection. So transactions need to be contactless Payments need, need to be digitized as much as possible. So banks need to be ready. They're not ready, they have to accelerate their digitization. What organizations can do? Organizations, business houses, um, companies, what can they do, both small and big? 
they should try their best to protect their employees rather than lay off employees because that would mean further crisis for the economy. People laid off means people low demand, people not having the purchasing power. And they have the moral responsibility to take care of the people. They might request the people to share the burden. They might say that they might talk about a salary cut in the interim to support the organization to get out of this crisis. They might take other measures but laying off should be the last thing in their mind. Protecting their employees is going to be important. The organizations need to reimagine themselves. They have to reimagine their organization structure, their role, their go-to-market strategy. They have to completely reimagine. When uh, in the right in the middle of this crisis, ITC, which uh, produces grocery items, um, they, have, they did something very interesting. They looked at a new business model. They don't have a door-to-door -door delivery network. They quickly thought about a new business model where they went to Domino's. Domino's has a door-to-door -door delivery network. So they tied up with Domino's and then leveraged Domino's door-to-door -door delivery network. Domino's was not selling pizzas because no one was visiting restaurants and nobody was buying food from outside. Um, so they were also game. They were interested in this tie up and ITC and Domino's came together. They thought about a new business model and it worked absolutely fine. Organizations will have to reimagine the way they do business, the way they go to customers, the way they run their organization structure and business models. They have to think about that differently. They also have to ensure that there is enough cash flow for them to pay salaries, to take care of their working capital you know, needs. Um, they should be in a position to have, should be in a position to liquidate, uh, so liquidify their, their um, and, and then generate enough cash. What can universities do? Um, you might wonder, can they really do something? Yes, they can. Um, in this crisis, many people will, be, will become jobless. And they would not have the time to go through another prolonged professional qualification like a master's degree for two years or three years or an undergraduate degree for three years. They need to quickly pick up new skills and become employable again. So if I'm working for an, for an industry where the industry is struggling to survive, struggling to exist, I, if I need to earn my living, then I need to build, I need to find other industries, other organizations, and I need to have relevant skills to get employed there. So universities can support by providing quick, accelerated learning to people, skill-based vocational learning, where people can actually pick up new skills and then be, become employable again. Finally, individuals, people like you and me, what should we do? to deal with this crisis better. Let's look at the next slide. All that we can do in this time of crisis is we need to take charge of our career. We should not wait for the governments to take care of our career. Universities, banks, educational uh, institutions, financial institutions, business houses, you need to take charge of your career. I need to take charge of my career. That's the only way out. As you look at the next slide, this is something very profound and powerful. This statement, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react. So what happens to you is 90% how you react. This is a very profound statement made by a very famous personality. And he very profoundly tells us that it's you who can control your life because 90% of what happens in your life is how you react to situations, to problems, to your environment and surroundings. 
So my dear friends, it's time for you to take charge of your career. Now, now let's look at what we can do to take charge of our career. Friends, we'll have to ask ourselves four questions. These are the four questions that we need to ask ourselves. Which industries and jobs are affected by COVID-19? That's the first question that you should start with. If you're already employed, ask yourself, what is the status of the industry that I work in? The organization that I work for, the job that I have, how it has been impacted by COVID-19. So, and also ask yourself, what are the industries which are going to grow, which are going to strive, which are going to excel in the COVID, post COVID-19 scenario? So it's absolutely important for you to ask this question. The very first question, which industries are getting affected, which are not? If I'm already employed, is my industry getting impacted or not? If it is impacted, which is other industry that which are the other industries that are not impacted? Next question that you need to ask yourself is what skills should I focus on more? Now that my industry has been impacted, I need to pick up a new skill to be to become employable in another industry or another company. What skills should I focus on more? Or if my industry is going to survive but I know that my industry, my company will see a major shift in their business models, in the, in the approach, in the way they do business. So what are the new skills that I should focus on more? Third question is how do I find and successfully acquire emerging career opportunities? So once I pick up the skills, how do I know where these opportunities exist? And how do I acquire those opportunities? And the last question that you should ask is how do I stay focused and energized during this period of crisis? So during this period of uncertainty, when I'm trying to figure out what's my career opportunity, what job I should look at, what industry should I look at, in the midst of all this turmoil, how do I stay focused? How do I stay focused on my learning? How do I stay focused on my exploration? How do I stay focused on my job? How do I remain energized during this period? These are the questions, four questions that you need to ask yourself. And it doesn't matter. Answers to these questions can be different for different people. It need not be the same. You know, the way each one of us remain focused, somebody that practices mindfulness, somebody practices meditation, somebody practices some other relaxation technique. But you need to figure out the answers to these four questions. Now let's look at the next slide, which makes an attempt to answer the first question, which are the industries which are going to get impacted by COVID-19? Well, friends, at the, as this crisis intensifies, we will see that some industries are struggling. And we'll also see some industries are becoming stronger at the end of the crisis. Who are the ones that will struggle? The ones on the right side, airline industry, tourism, hospitality, hotel, baggage and luggage. If nobody's traveling, nobody's going to buy suitcases and briefcases. Automobile industry, the, you know, as we move out of this COVID-19 crisis, the last thing on our mind would be buying a car. You know, you would, you would think about other things real estate, consumer products, furniture, etc. These products, these industries will be very badly impacted by COVID-19. Which are the ones which would emerge stronger? French healthcare, medical devices, online education is going to become the order of the day. I think many of you might be undergoing your classes right now through the online mode. I don't think your classes have stopped. Collaborative platforms, organizations should look for collaborative platforms, meeting uh, rooms, virtual meeting tools, uh, tools for virtual collaboration, etc. E-learning platforms, classroom training will significantly reduce both in corporates as well as in camp university and college campuses. E-commerce, e-retail, 
home entertainment, technology, insurance, people would be more conscious about health insurance, given the uncertainties that is in the air, they would think about protecting the health, they would think about safeguarding the health, their health. So these are the industries which will become stronger. So it's for you to look at which industry that you should switch over to if there is a need. If you are an industry which is struggling, it's the time for you to look at another industry which is probably going to become stronger. But at the same time, I will not completely rule out the possibility of you working for an industry which is getting weaker. Well, you can do that provided you believe that you can help that organization or the industry bounce back because airline companies, tourism companies, hotels, automobile companies would need help to bounce back because they are the ones who will be badly hit during the crisis, after the crisis, they need help to come back, to stand on their feet, be back on the road. So if you can bring in your expertise, your competency, your knowledge to help them bounce back, you could have a, a lucrative opportunity in industries which are likely to get badly impacted by the crisis. You figure it out which industry that you want to look at, what jobs that you're going to look at. Now let's move on. Now, the most important thing is it's not enough to know which industries are going to excel, which industries are going to get weaker. It's important for, for us to know what are the skills that we need to build, what are the competencies that we need to build for today and tomorrow for a world which is beyond COVID-19, which is a new world. COVID-19 will get over. The crisis will disappear after some time. But the world will not, the world is going to become a different world. It may not go back to the old world. It's going to be a new world. So, every state department of COVID 19 will work in future. The way we're going to do business, all of that is going to change. So the skills required for that very you cannot solve problems, today's problems by using yesterday's thinking. You cannot solve today's problems by using yesterday's techniques. You need to use today's techniques, today's skills, today's competencies to deal with the problems that you are encountering today. So when we talk about competencies, we can broadly categorize them into two, mindset and skill set. Mindset is, is, is all about your beliefs, your value system, your thought process. Skill set is your ability, is your knowledge. So let's look at the mindset attributes. Mindset attributes, how are you going to tune your mind? How are you going to condition your mind today and tomorrow? Get ready, my dear friends, to live with uncertainty forever. If you believe that the world is going to become stable tomorrow, everything is going to be certain and stable and honky-dory, that's not going to happen again. Please be prepared to live with uncertainty forever. Be comfortable with discomfort. Discomfort should not really hassle you, should not really trouble you or bother you much because understand that this being discomfort discomfort is is going to be part and parcel for life resilience ability to bounce back and keep pushing when you try to do something when you try to pursue a career goal career aspiration you will have difficulties you will have obstacles you will have challenges you will fail miserably but have the ability to bounce back and keep going keep moving don't give up Sometimes you may be very, very close to a destination when you are giving up. That can be a disaster. Flexibility and adaptability. Flexibility, all of you need to be flexible. All of us in, in today and tomorrow's world need to be flexible and adaptable. Don't be rigid about the industry that you want to work for. 
don't be very rigid about private sector government sector don't be rigid about which city that you want to work for work in which country that you want to work in be flexible what about taking up an internship if not a full time job what about you know taking up an international assignment what about taking up a project and working on it be flexible be adaptable don't be rigid find an opportunity be opportunistic grab an opportunity don't worry too much about salaries your domain etc because you may not become choosers in new future you need to become flexible being fearless is is an absolutely important attribute <coughs> which also is linked with the next one which is willingness to experiment and fail you must have the courage to experiment try and fail if required and you should be should not be fearful of failure but keep one thing in mind try experiment and fail fast that is important if you're failing fast your chances of su succeeding faster is much brighter <coughs> excuse me empathy is another important mindset attribute having the compassion and empathy for your team members for your stakeholders for your customers for your colleagues for your manager for your partners it is absolutely important and not just for them not just for your professional colleagues and partners and customers also for people who are struggling because in this new world if you are you are lucky enough to succeed and thrive there'll be many who would struggle be empathetic to them help them come up help those who are struggling and in a world where you live successfully and enable others to become successful that's the best world to live in but if you live in a world where everybody else is unsuccessful your living has no meaning so these are the mindset attributes that you need to develop now what are the skill set that we need to build innovation and creativity that's absolutely essential you need to be absolutely creative and have out of box thinking in the new world which is complex and ambiguous and volatile creative thinking is absolutely important influence and persuasion is not enough to come up with creative ideas you should also have the ability to influence other people about your ideas your ability to connect the dots ability to see the future ability to predict the future basis the understanding of the past and your intuition about the future steve jobs was excellent at it he could when the whole world was using men from computers which were of the size of a building he had already thought about desktops he knew that the computing power can sit on a table it can sit on a desk when the most manufacturing computer manufacturing companies were doing research to make the best laptop in the industry he had already thought about the pam top he had already thought about the smartphones he knew that the fastest computing device is going to be the smartphone that's the ability to connect the dots ability to see the future ability to see what's coming problem solving and value creation absolutely important creation of value solving problems emerging technology my dear friends the future is going to be technology future will be ruled by machines so you have two choices either understand how to master technology uh, technology how to work with machines or get mastered and killed by the machines themselves so be proficient in technology and among the technologies data science is going to be the most prominent prominent data is going to rule this world artificial intelligence and machine learning data science robotics cloud computing internet of things cyber security etc are going to be emerging technologies pick up your technologies and build your skills on that domain knowledge is important if you are an hr professional you need to be the best in hr if you are a supply chain professional you need to be the best in supply chain if you picked up finance as your specialization be the best in finance no compromise there but the next one is intriguing 
it talks about multiple specializations. So in today and tomorrow's world, we need to be the best at one, but good at many. So be the best in one area, in one domain, but be good at many other domains. It's the age of multiple specializations. Don't keep all your eggs in the same basket. If you keep, keep all your eggs in the same basket, who knows tomorrow what happens to your industry, tomorrow what happens to domain, tomorrow what happens to your job. So pick up multiple specializations that you can switch from one domain to another quickly, one job to another quickly, one uh, career to another career quickly. Now, let's move on. I know we are running short of time, but I think I'll quickly take you through a couple of slides before I stop and open it up for questions and answers. So my dear friends, as we continue this journey, we will see three roads ahead of us. One road is the road to perish. Other one is the road to survive. The third one is the road to thrive. And let's look at in the next slide, who will be on the road to perish? If we remain in a state of denial, if you do not acknowledge COVID-19, if you do not acknowledge, acknowledge the change, if you believe that the world will soon get back to the old normal, and if you do not see the, do not feel the need to change ourselves, rather resist change and blame everybody else for our suffering, we are the ones who will take the road to perish. We cannot, we cannot exist. That's going to be a disaster. Let's look at who are going to survive. Who are the ones which, who will take the road to survive? As you look at the next slide, you can see those of us who will acknowledge that the world is changing. And those of us who know that the world would not remain the same after COVID-19. Those of us who would continue to explore, find out new possibilities. Those who make serious efforts to adapt to the new world. Those who are eager, keen, and willing to change. And the ones who are following the leaders quickly learning from others are the ones who will survive the challenge. They would survive in this world. Now let's look at who are the ones who will take the road to thrive. Well, very few of us will take the road to thrive, unfortunately, to start with at least. But who are those people? Those people who can see the change before the change comes, who can change faster than change itself who can reimagine themselves, while those who will survive will adapt to change, the ones who will thrive will reimagine themselves completely. They'll completely make over, change over to a new role, to a new function, to a new structure, to take advantage of the change. They are the ones who are excited about the prospects of the new world. They're the ones who are going to write the rules of the new world. And they're also the ones who will have tremendous empathy and they're gonna help others to see the change, prepare for the change, help them adapt to the change. My dear friends, they are the ones who are going to take the road to thrive. Dear friends, which road we are going to take will depend on our decisions, our choices and our actions. That would determine whether we are taking the road to perish, taking the road to survive, or taking the road to thrive. All right, so let's move on. So this brings us to the end of our session today. My narrative on this topic. Um, but at the end, I would like to tell you the future is about transformation. The future is about disruption. And if we really want to completely transform ourselves, then we need to pick the right tools, right skills, and the right mindset. Because transformation is not only about skills, it's about the skill set, the tool set, and the mindset. With this, I would conclude my narrative here and um, bring up the next slide. And friends, this is now, um, and the next slide, this is now time for Q&A. So I don't know if uh, I think one of the moderators will help me um, or I can look at the questions myself. Um, 
So please use the chat window to ask um, questions and I will try and answer them. So that was a question, how OPD will become online? Ak um, Akash. So um, yes, yeah, so this is an interesting question. So typically the outpatient um, uh, the area in the, in the hospitals where is, is, a, is a physical setting where patients can walk in and they can meet the OPD doctor. And depending on the, on the, on the gravity of the illness, the doctor would either see, prescribe some medicine, send them home, or if it's a serious matter, would recommend um, admission to the hospital, etc. But now in future, uh, most hospitals will have this OPD app uh, where patients can log in and they will be connected to a, to, the, to a doctor through video conference. And they can talk to the doctor, ask their uh, questions. The doctor can diagnose um, do the diagnosis online, prescribe medicines. If it is absolutely critical for the doctor, sorry, for the patient to come to the hospital, the doctor will recommend that, um, otherwise not. So that's how OPDs are going to become online. Um, the next, I don't know, is a question or a statement. In yesterday news, 12 crores people jobless in the month of April. Um, uh, well, I shared with you some time ago the predictions of the uh, International Labor Organization. I don't have too many statistics around how many people have already become jobless, etc. But the fact of the matter is uh, millions of people are going to become jobless. Um, many of them will lose their jobs permanently. Some of them will lose their jobs for a temporary period. But yes, this is a grave situation. Um, can I get the PPT for the webinar? Yes, you can. Um, we will. I will uh, make it. I will send it to the to the institution, and they will uh, probably uh, distribute the slides. That's possible. Um, the next question is a little bit explanation about deferment of repayment. Well, um, most of the smalls. Anurag has asked this question. So Anurag, the small businesses, the small and medium scale businesses, would struggle in this period. And many of them may have taken loans from financial institutions and banks, and they may not have enough cash to repay the loans because they have to take care of their working expenses. They have to take care of the salaries. They have to take care of um, the loan repayment as well, but their revenues would have gone down significantly. So banks can help them by allowing them to defer or postpone their loan repayment by a few months. That's a contribution banks can do to boost economy and support uh, the business community as well. Um, the consumer products, well, um, the very essential consumer products which are used on a day-to-day -day basis may be on demand, but you may not want to really, if you are planning to buy a washing machine, you might want, may, may defer that. If you're planning to buy um, a new television set, um, you might say, okay, if I already have one, let me use it for some more time. I'll probably uh, buy it later. It may not be a priority for you. Saving money, uh, keeping cash with you probably would be a bigger priority today and tomorrow. That would lead to reduction in, in demand. How should I counsel? I'm a fresher. I'm not very sure about the question what exactly you mean you are you are, are you if if you're asking where you can get uh, counseling where will you get that support um if that is your question i think today um definitely there are many opportunities i don't know if within the institution there is career counseling i'm assuming that there is a career counseling cell take advantage of that but there are also professional career counselors who counsel students professionals and others, but there are plenty of opportunities today. What are the industries and who will survive? Uh, I will uh, skip that question uh, in, the, in the interest of time because I talked about it in my presentation. I gave a list of industries which will survive and the industries which will struggle. 
um, and if the PowerPoint presentation is distributed to you, you can kind of refresh and relook at it again. Uh, impact on advertising and media industry, yes. Um, um, it would also have an impact. Uh, many companies will cut down on advertising um, in the interim. So advertising and media industries will have to reinvent themselves. They will have to come up with, um, uh, with out of box thinking and out of box strategies around digital marketing, et cetera. You might see significant reduction in print media advertisements and so on. Digital marketing is going to probably uh, get a booster. Uh, that might, um, after an initial lull period, it might pick up. But print media advertisement might see a significant drop because organizations with less revenue may cut down on, on that advertising agency, uh, on their advertisement expenses, unless they, base, unless they see a very clear ROI. Um, what are this? Probably I will pick up one more question in the interest of time. Uh, and uh, what I will do is after this, I will share my um, uh, uh, my credential, my, my coordinates, and then you can reach out to me and then send me your questions and I will try and reply, answer them. I think your, this question is, what are the skill set required to manage for non-IT, okay, if you are saying how, if you're talking about what skills are required for a non-IT company, that is a question. Um, if I've understood it correctly, I would assume that, um, well, the transferable skills are the same. You know, your ability to, to influence, communicate, problem solving, these skills are common across um, any industry that you work for, it doesn't matter. But when it comes to technology, uh, you need to understand what technology is relevant for the, for the non-IT organization that you're talking about. If it's a finance company, then probably blockchain, um, cryptocurrency, et cetera, would be good technologies to look at. So understand, um, and then if you are an HR professional, you might want to look at HR tech. So technology is irrespective of your domain, whether you are an IT or non-IT, technology is going to become the way of life. You need to improve your technology skills and domain skills and the other transferable professional skills I talked about, plus the mindset shift that we all need to make. Um, I would probably stop here. I know there are a lot of questions, but I would request, um, Akash to bring up the last slide where you can see my coordinates and um, you can always reach out to me. This is my email ID. You can um, write to me. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, tweet me with your questions. Um, you, if you want to listen to my other speeches on a wide variety of topics, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Surya Mohapatra Official. So here are my coordinates. Feel free to reach out to me with your questions. With this, I would like to conclude here. I would like to thank um, the university for giving me this opportunity to come and talk to you about this topic. And thank you everybody for giving me a patient hearing. You have been a wonderful audience. Thank you.